Hey guys, it's Waltech. Sorry it's been a while. I said that in my last video too. I've been working. I've been trying to uh, make some video ideas. I got lots piled up actually. I got lots of videos that are supposed to be underway right now, but working on them, editing, taking all of it, takes a lot. Um, and I just really haven't had time for it, especially with like I work in retail, so Black Friday coming up, you know, there's a lot to prepare for. Work has been pretty hectic. Um, so yeah, but today I am going to be reviewing a $1.50 graphics card. This is a graphics card that costs less than a soda in New York, or even a water in New York, so it's pretty cheap. Uh, the real question is, how does it play? Um, I'll let you guys decide on that one. Let's get into it. The card that I obtained off eBay for $1.50 was the HD Radeon 3450. It has 512 megabytes of DDR2 super memory on a 64-bit memory bus. It has a whole 40 shading units. And the clocks stock are 600 megahertz on the GPU clock and 500 megahertz on the memory clock, which we are going to be overclocking this today because this card is hot garbage. It also luckily runs off DirectX 10.1, meaning that it actually can play games that are DirectX 11 with compatibility. Fortunate that we can play DirectX 11, however, some games are 12 nowadays, so some modern games will be out of question for this card. Now that we got the specs out of the way, you know what to expect, so let's jump into the benchmarks. Alright, to get our benchmarks started, we'll start on Skyrim. We had 13 at the lowest, 16 FPS average, and 20 high. This was not a very playable experience. We did 720p and had it low as it went, and still no luck. On next benchmark was Fallout New Vegas, 720p, all low settings, and we had a bit more luck than we did here in Skyrim. Uh, we had 17 low, 34 average, 63 high, and we had 14 for 1% lows and 5 for 0.1% lows. Um, it didn't stutter that much, even though there were those uh, lows there. I would say this game actually played pretty fluently, as you can see. Uh, good performance. I mean, if you're a really light gamer and you don't care about full HD, I, I wouldn't call it too bad. Let's get to the next thing. With the bad compatibility of this card and playing a lot of games, I realize that I cannot play a lot of games. So I took a different approach on what this card might be good for, and so I fired up Project 64. And I was able to play at 1080p, native resolution, and maintaining a perfect 60. It never dipped down all the way through playing Ocarina of Time. Uh, pretty good, to, in my opinion, if you want to do retro gaming, this might be your thing. And just to throw in a little bit more, I decided to try this on Dolphin, which is a GameCube emulator, which is far beyond, uh, you know, Nintendo 64. And... I had that in 640x480, which is the native GameCube actual standard uh, definition by the console. Uh, we kept 60 FPS in windowed mode the whole time. Uh, it did dip down in a cutscene, I noticed, uh, to 32 FPS. Uh, but the whole entire other time, rather than that one little tiny cutscene, it was 60 frames per second and kept it consistently. Look at this beautiful gameplay. So, my ending or closing thoughts. How good is this card? Well, I don't really know how to think of it as a question. For the price, I'd say pretty good if it plays anything, right? A dollar fifty. Can't even really get food for that price. Um, however, I would also say that this game, this thing, is not good for gaming at all. However, it is for a certain form of gaming. If you're into retro builds and you have like a random old PC laying around and you really, really love retro games, this thing is amazing for that purpose. So I think if you need like a cheap build for retro gaming, yeah, you can go and pick one of these up. Uh, if you find it cheap enough is a real question, if you find it cheap as I did. Um, otherwise, I'd recommend to stay away from it. Uh, it's a 
bad card, you could probably pick something else up that would be more capable of modern games. Heck, even the uh, $12 7570 I showed you does better. Um, all these benchmarks were after this thing was overclocked, by the way. I didn't even bother showing you the stock numbers because they are absolutely pathetic. But this has been it. This is Waltech, and I'm signing out. Thanks for uh, stopping by, guys. Uh, yeah, if you'd like to see more videos, uh, I'll ask you to give this a like, hit that subscribe button, and if you really want to contribute to this channel, I will be opening a pre Patreon with several tiers and rewards. So, yeah, guys, uh, look in the descriptions for that. Uh, until then, I am signing out.